Hello students. So today I am here with class 12th chapter probability lecture number 1. In this we are going to discuss about exercise 13.3 some of the questions. Here comes the first one which is question number 6. Okay so question number 6 was given in homework as well. So just a uh, discussion about it. They are saying there are three coins as you can see. Three coins they have. One is two headed coin. So I am writing here see two headed coins. Okay, first one is two headed coin. The second they are saying another is a biased coin. Another is a biased coin. And the third one is an unbiased coin. Do you understand the difference between biased and unbiased? Unbiased means the probability of coming up head and tail is equal in that. Biased means it is, see as it is written here, another is a biased coin that comes up heads 75% of the time. When you throw it, then 75% of the time you are going to get a head. So it is biased. In two handed, both the side you have heads only. So whenever you throw it, every time you are going to get a even which is head. So that's a sure event. Fine. Okay, now they are saying one of the coin is chosen at random. You know any of the coin can be chosen at random. So I can see that E1 be the event that is a two-handed coin which is selected. E2 be the event that the biased coin is selected. E3 be the event that the unbiased coin is selected. So probability of even, probability of E2 because they are equally probable, anyone can be selected randomly, the probability is 1 out of 3. Clear? Now, they are saying one of the three coins is chosen at random and it shows head. What is the common thing that both, all these three heads are doing? They are showing the head. So I consider event A showing head or shows head. Now, they are saying that it is showing head. This is already given to us. We have to find the probability that it was a two-headed coin. So what do we have to calculate? Probability that it is showing head. We have to find the probability that it was two-headed coin. Two-headed is even. So this is the probability that we have to calculate, reverse probability. Now let us write the all three possible cases. Suppose you select the first coin which is two-headed. What is the probability of showing head? Because it is two-headed, the probability will be one. Clear? Because it is a sure event. When the coin is two-headed, definitely the probability of coming up head is one. The second case, E2, that means a biased coin. That comes up heads 75% of the time. So probability of coming up of head when the event is E2 means the coin is biased 75% 75 upon 100. The third one, probability of showing head when the event 3 has happened that means the coin is unbiased. You know for that it is 1 by 2, the coin is fair enough. Now, E1 by A will be calculated as P of even into P of even, wait a second, P of even into P of A by even. This is the favorable divided by, you know, all the three cases. The first one is P of even into P of A by even. Then the second one, P of A by E2. And then the third one. P of E3 into P of A given 3. So these are the possible cases. All three cases, that is the total probability we are going to divide with this. And the favorable cases, this one. Now we have all the six values required. We have these three values, E1, E2 and E3. And we have these conditional probabilities as well. So we are just going to place the values in the formula and we will find the answer to it. Right? I hope you can all do it now. Let us move to the next question of it. Here comes the next question, which is question number 10. In question number 10, they are saying, suppose a girl throws a guy. 
If she gets a pipe or six, so what is actually happening? I just represented you the diagram. If she gets a five or six, if she gets a five or six, she tosses a coin three times. Then coin is tossed three times. Okay. Now when you toss a coin three times, what are the possible outcomes? We can get head, head, head. Head, head, tail, head, tail, tail, head, tail, head, tail, head, head, tail, tail, head, tail, head, tail, and tail, tail, tail. These are the eight possible outcomes. Now, okay, do we know the probability of coming up five and six? Yes. Out of six, two numbers are there, so one by three. Now, see the second case. If she gets 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, it is written. She is getting 1, 2, 3, 4. She tosses her four months. So, probability of 1, 2, 3, 4 is 4 out of 6, which is 2 by 3. So, when this happens, she is tossing a coin once. Okay. So, what are the outcomes? Either a head or a tail. Two outcomes. Now they are saying if she obtained exactly one head, okay, in both the cases. So what is the common event here? A, that she is getting exactly one head. That I am considering as this. Okay, now what are they asking us to find out? See, what is the probability that she is receiving or she is getting exactly one head? That means this is already there. What we have to find that she threw 1, 2, 3, 4 with the die. That means, let us consider this event as E2, this event as E1. So, we have to calculate E2 by A. This is to be calculated. Right. And let us write the things. We know P of E1 and P of E2. We have written here, this is P of E2. This is probability of E1 which is 1 by 3, you can see here, okay, probability when she got 5 or 6 from the die, that means even 1, and then what is she getting, exactly 1 head, now you see out of these 8 outcomes, exactly 1 head comes in 1, 2, 3, out of 8, 3, 3 by 8 is the probability that the case 1 has happened, that means she's got 5 by 6, 5 for 6 on the die, and then she got exactly 1 head. The second thing that she got 1, 2, 3, 4 on the die, and then she got exactly 1 head, that is 1 by 2 out of 2, 1 is the favorable one, right? Now for P of E2 by A, what we have to do? For P of E2 by A, we have to write the first case or the second case. This is E2. E the favorable to E2 is P of E2 into P of A by E2 divided by both the cases. First P of E1 into P of A by E1 plus P of E2 into P of A by E2. Now we have all the values. See, all the four values we have that I have encircled. All the four values we have can place in the formula and can get the answer. So simple we have done. According to the given conditions, we wrote the events, the outcomes, and then we identified what we have to calculate and it is all done. Let us move to the next question now. Here is your next question. In this question, okay, First of all, this question has come up in board exams many times. It is the most important question of the exercise. The question says, a card from a pack of 52 cards is lost. So, total 52 cards were there initially. Okay. And one card is lost. We have lost one card. So, how many cards are we left with? 51. Okay. Now, they are saying, from the remaining, that means from the 51 pack of cards, 
two cards are drawn and are found to be both diamonds. We are picking, taking out two cards and both the cards are found to be of diamonds. From here, two cards are selected and both the cards are of diamonds. Okay. Now, what are they asking us to find? Find the probability. The one thing that we know is common that both the cards are diamond. Both cards drawn after losing the card are diamonds. This is the common event, right? So they are asking, find the probability of the lost card being a diamond. Now, one card is lost. It can be any card. It can be of spade, it can be of club, it can be of heart, it can be of any or diamond, right? So let us make two events. Even as event even shows that the lost card is diamond. And we will form E2 as the lost card is not diamond. So the diamond Correct. So these are the events. What are they asking us? First of all, let me write that. They are saying that the two cards you are drawing are of diamonds. You have to find the probability that it is a diamond card which was lost. So for the loss we consider as even. So we have to calculate even given A. This we have to calculate. Now probability of even that the loss card is a diamond card. How many diamond cards out of 52 cards we have? 30. So 13 by 52 which is 1 by 4. In the second case, the loss card not being of diamond. What will be the probability of it? 39 by 52, which is 3 by 4. Now, suppose the diamond card is lost. Okay, now we are left with 51 cards. And we are finding out the probability that after losing one diamond card, we are finding out that the other two cards that we have drawn are of diamonds. So of diamond, if the diamond cards are lost, so out of 13 diamonds, we are left with 12 diamond cards. So from 12, we are selecting two cards out of 51 divided by the total possible outcome here. And it can be sold as 12 by 51 into 11 by 50. This we are going to get. Similarly, we can actually find out P of A by E2. What will be P of A by E2? A by E2. That means the lost card is not diamond. So we are all safe with these 13 cards. Okay. So we are going to select two cards from these 13 cards. Then divided by 51 C2. Here, so I hope you can now, you know the formula, also you know all the values, E1, E2, A given E2, A given E2. You can place in this formula, divide the favorable one. Favorable one is E1 and A by E2, divide by both the cases. This question has been important, has is important and has come in a body steps. So kindly do repeat the solution, do it independently yourself and then you can get the answer for it. Okay, let us now move to the next question, which is question number 13. This question is also important. Okay, in this question, it is really important to identify what is given to us and what they are asking. Most of the students get confused here. So it is important you read it carefully and understand it. Probability that A speaks truth is 4 by 5. Okay. One probability is given 4 by 5. A coin is tossed and we are saying a reports that a head appears. Okay. A is any person who speaks from the probability is 4 by 5. A coin is tossed. So when we toss a coin, what will happen? Either a head will come or a tail will come. A reports that a head appears. He has just tossed a coin. Whatever comes, let it be head, let it be tail. What is he reporting? That head appears. So I am considering event A, that A reports head. Right. Now, let us consider 
Okay, probability of coming up of head is how much? 1 by 2. Probability of not coming head is 1 by 2. Right? So it is head comes. And here head doesn't come. Okay. Now, what are they saying? A speaks truth. What we have to find out, let us first calculate that. A has already reported a head has come. What has A reported? Head come. Okay. We have to find that it was actually a head. Then he reported head. So, actually getting head, it is even event. So, we have to calculate this. Let us find out the reverse process. Possible uh, probabilities. A given even. A given even means what? We are finding out that means actually head has come and then A is reporting head. If head has come and he reported head, that means he is speaking the truth. The probability for that is 4 by 5. So you realize here it was written a simple statement indirectly. This is a conditional statement that head is coming up and he is reporting it. That means he is speaking the truth. So 4 by 5 is not the normal probability. It is a conditional probability. Now probability that head doesn't come up. He is actually reporting every time it is head. That means he is lying. If head doesn't come up, that means he went E2 and he has reported head has come or head has shown. So, the probability is 1 minus 4 by 5 which is 1 by 5. Clear? Now, we have to find out even by A. So, the formula for that you know, the favorable case which is P of even into P of A by even divided by both the cases. The first case will be of even. P of even into P of A by even plus P of E2 into P of A by E2. So now you see you have all the four values to place in the formula. Right. We can just place the values and can get the answer. I hope this is clear to everyone. This is important to know how to identify what is given in the statement actually in probability this is the most important thing if you get to know what is given what is asked your purpose is done let us move to the last question of today's lecture which is like question number 14 in question number 14 a and b are two events a is a subset of b so i'll just create it Let us do it. So, suppose this is a sample space. Okay. Now, out of it, let us consider this is B. A is lying inside B. That means A is a subset of B. Okay. So, the segment is clear through the diagram also. Then, which of the following are true? Now, you see in this question, the first option is P of B equals actually P of A by B into P of A. Right. This is the statement actually. Okay. And this is the second option. And in every question I say P of A by B is coming. So let us write P of A by B. See. P of A given B. The formula for this is P of A intersection B divided by P of B. Now A intersection B as you can clearly see from the diagram in A intersection B A will come. Both have A as the common thing. So, this will be written as P of A upon P of B into or is equal to P of A by B. What is P of B from here? P of A divided by P of A given B. Now, in the question it is clearly mentioned that P of B is not equal to 0. So, we know probability of every event lies from 0 to 1. It can be 0 also. But as it is mentioned, it is not 0. I am not writing equal to sign. No. Correct. Now, let us put the value of P of B, which is P of A into or divided by P of A given B. From this equation, I have just placed the value here. Less than equal to 1. Multiplying both the sides with P of A intersection A divided by B, that is probability of A given B, I get P of A less than P of A given B. Right. So I say P of A is less than P of A given B or I say P of A given B is greater than P of A and which is the third option as you can see. 
So the correct answer for this question is C part. So I hope this is done. Now in homework what are you going to do is as I told you miscellaneous exercise is really important so giving you miscellaneous questions today. These are the questions that you are going to do from your NCRT miscellaneous exercise of chapter probability. Okay, so that's all for today. Thank you.